Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Subtle Engineering, where we will be working through the technique for calculating the hydrostatic load on an inclined surface. This video follows on from principles learnt in the previous videos, where we learnt how to use the surface integral to find the centroid of a planar surface, and then where we introduce the techniques for calculating hydrostatic loads. I'll leave the links to both of these in the description so you can check them out if you haven't already. Consider the tank shown in the diagram here, which is filled to a depth of h0 with liquid of uniform density rho. The tank has a uniform width of w and is open and the liquid's free surface is exposed to the atmosphere. In this case, one of the end walls of the tank is inclined at an angle of theta to the horizontal, as shown. Let S denote the region of the inclined surface that is in contact with the liquid, and the coordinate directions x, y, and z are defined as shown, relative to the bottom corner of the tank, with z denoting the vertical height above the tank's base, and x and y denoting the horizontal coordinates in the plane of the tank's base. For convenience, as we will see later, we also introduce the h coordinate denoting the vertical depth below the liquid's free surface, where h is related to z by h equals h0 minus z. With this information, and the techniques learned in the previous videos, we will now work through how to calculate the hydrostatic load, F, and its corresponding centre of pressure that acts on the inclined surface of the tank. As we've seen in previous videos, the magnitude of the load, F, is given by F equals the surface integral of P with respect to A. Additionally, the load acts in the direction negative n, where n is the unit outward normal vector to the inclined surface. As the surface S is inclined, we must introduce a new inclined coordinate, which we will call u. This new coordinate will be a measure of the distance down the surface starting at the free surface of the liquid in the direction parallel to the plane of the inclined surface, and will allow us to perform the integral from the equation above in the plane of the surface S. The inclined coordinate, u, is relative to the vertical depth coordinate, h, by h equals u sine theta, and the surface S has an area of a equals w l0, where l0 is the liquid's depth relative to the inclined coordinate, u, as can be seen in the diagram. l0 is related to the vertical depth, h0, by h0 equals l0 sine theta, and just from looking at the diagram, it is clear that L0 is greater than H0. The gorge pressure is given by P with respect to the coordinate direction H equals rho g H for H equals 0 to H equals H0. And so the equivalent gorge pressure in terms of the inclined coordinate U is P with respect to the coordinate direction U equals rho g U sine theta for U equals 0 to U equals L0. Notice here we simply substituted our expression for h from above into our equation for the gorge pressure distribution. Now our equation for the magnitude of the load f can be evaluated using the above expression for p equals p with respect to u. The surface s has uniform width of w and so the integral in this equation can be evaluated by defining a thin strip of area dA equals w du which we can visualise with this illustration here. Therefore, we can rewrite f equals the surface integral of p with respect to a as the integral of rho g u sine theta w with respect to u from 0 to l0. Furthermore, we can factor rho g w sine theta out of the integral, giving us rho g w sine theta times the integral of u with respect to u from 0 to l0. The integral of u with respect to u is equal to 1 half u squared. So we get rho g w sine theta times by 1 half u squared with boundary limits of 0 and l0. And substituting in our boundary limits, we get f is equal to 1 half rho g w l0 squared times sine theta. Recall that the area of the surface, a, equals w l0, and that h0 equals l0 sine theta. Therefore, substituting in the expression for a first, f is equal to 1 half rho g l0 sine theta a, and then in terms of h0 rather than l0, we get f is equal to 1 half rho g h0 a. 
In the previous two videos, where we calculated the hydrostatic load on a horizontal base and a vertical end wall, we worked through the calculations for finding the centre of pressure in terms of the horizontal x-coordinate, even though you could determine it using intuition. In this case, for our inclined surface, we can use our intuition again, and by symmetry, we could tell that in terms of the x-coordinate, the centre of pressure, Cp, must lie along the vertical centre line of S. If you would like to see the manual calculations for determining this, the links for the previous two videos will be in the description below for you to check out. To calculate the depth of Cp below the free surface, in terms of U, we will use moments about the free surface. With Up denoting the centre of pressure for the load F in terms of coordinate direction U, and Mx denoting the moment of F about the x-axis at the free surface of the liquid, we have Mx equals Up F. And then using the hydrostatic pressure distribution, we can find Mx by Mx equals the surface integral of U times P with respect to A. Combining both of these, we get Fup equals the surface integral of U times P with respect to A. Substituting in our pressure distribution of P equals rho GU sine theta, and then our expression for dA of dA equals W du, we get the integral of rho g u squared sine theta times w with respect to u from 0 to L0. And then we can factor the constants out of the equation, giving us rho g w sine theta times the integral of u squared with respect to u from 0 to L0. The integral of u squared with respect to u is equal to one third u cubed. So therefore, we get fup is equal to rho gw sine theta times one third u cubed with boundary limits of zero and L naught. And then substituting in our boundary limits, we have one third rho gw L naught cubed sine theta. Again, using a equals w L naught and h naught equals L naught sine theta, we can write our answer as FUP equals one third rho g L naught squared sine theta A, and then one third rho g H naught L naught A. Combining our equations for FUP and for the magnitude of the load F gives UP equals FUP divided by F, which is equal to one third rho g H naught L naught A, all divided by one half rho g H naught A and this simplifies to two-thirds L naught. And therefore, you should be able to see that in terms of vertical depth h, the centre of pressure is located at a depth of hp equals two-thirds h naught. So, we can conclude by saying that the magnitude of the hydrostatic load acting on the inclined surface, f, equals one-half rho g h naught a. And the centre of pressure on s is located at xp hp, is equal to one half w two thirds h naught. This result is intuitive because the pressure does not vary horizontally across S. So we expect Cp to be positioned along the vertical centre line of S. However, the pressure does vary vertically across S. In particular, there is greater pressure acting on the bottom of the surface than at the top. Hence, we expect Cp to be positioned in the bottom half of S. Note that in terms of the z-coordinate, Cp on S is positioned at xp zp is equal to one half w one third h naught. Now we have seen how to calculate the hydrostatic load and find the point of action of that load on horizontal, vertical and inclined planar surfaces for homogeneous liquids. In the next video, we will work through an example for calculating the hydrostatic load and point of action of that load on a vertical end wall with a continuously stratified liquid, where the density of the liquid increases with depth below the free surface. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.